morning. How is everybody doing this morning? I want to greet all of the people who are watching us online because we post these videos on YouTube. Welcome, everybody. Those of you who are not a part of our congregation and those of you who are watching who are a part of our congregation, we want you to come. <laughs> we want you to come out and visit. There's no safer place than to be in the shelter of the Most High. So we thank all of you for being here, and we do welcome you. Pray that you are safe, and we look forward to seeing you again real soon. So it's good to see all of you. Let me get my music stand over here to put my notes on. I believe the Lord's really giving me a, a strong word or a, a, um, an encouraging word for you today that will really help you fulfill the purpose of God in your life. I've been talking about that the last few weeks, and I want to continue to do that today and give you a message called Reasons to Fulfill Your Purpose. I learned a long time ago, I will do pretty much anything if I have enough reasons to. If I don't have a reason to get out of bed, I usually don't. If, <laughs> if I don't have a reason to do something, I usually don't. But the more reasons you have, the easier it is or the more, more, more motivated you are. And so I want to pray together with you that you would really open up your heart to receive this word from the Lord because it could literally change the trajectory of your life and if it does that, it'll change the lives of the people around you. And who knows, that maybe the person around you who changes the person around them, who changes the person around them. You know, we're six degrees away from everybody on the planet, and you don't have to change a lot of people's lives or influence a lot of people to change the world. Just the world that you live in is what God asks you to do. So let's pray and prepare our hearts to receive from the Lord today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word of God that transforms our soul. We thank you for the word of God that reaches into our heart and speaks to us your words of wisdom and understanding and revelation that transforms us and helps us see life and ourselves and other people in a whole new light, the way you see them, through love and forgiveness and mercy, through understanding, through empowerment. And Lord, we thank you that we have the opportunity to be a part of what you're doing today. So Lord, we, we open our hearts to be willing to receive what you have to say to us. Let your Holy Spirit teach us today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I want to share with you this message called Reasons to Pursue Your Purpose. And I'm going to get to the reasons in a few minute, minutes, but let me say a couple of introductory things. Every person who has ever conceived is an idea of God, is a purpose, has a purpose of God. They have a destiny from God, the one that created them. And we've talked about that from Psalm 139. And that's a wonderful psalm to meditate upon. If you ever think, what is my life worth? Or am I a mistake? Or what is going on? And you can see that God intricately created you. And he wrote everything down about your life. And you can really focus, like we prayed, uh, sang in that one song, it is well with my soul, that we just trust in him. He's got the power to stop storms or to create storms, whatever it needs to happen to cause us to walk in all that he has for us. So you've been created with a unique and eternal purpose, a divine destiny, as we like to say, or a high calling from God. That's you. I'm not talking to the ministers or Pastor Lori or somebody. I'm talking to you, the people here. No, need to know that you have a divine call and destiny. According to the Bible, that's what it says. And it's not by chance. It wasn't by accident. It's not fate. It's not the force. <laughs> it's not any of these things that people attribute to some, you know, spiritual force. It's God, the creator of the universe, specifically designed you to be who you are. Now, it's our responsibility, which is what we're going to deal with today, to find out what that is, walk in that, and be the best at it that we can be. Now, knowing how God sees us and why he created us is essential for our purpose. I, think, I believe the more you know that, the more you can walk in what God has for you. Because I'll believe, I, I believe this, a lot of the things that when we discover God created me or us for this, we go, I, that's hard even to believe. I didn't know I was created for such an impact or to change the world in such a way. Uh, I thought, you know, a lot of times we're just wanting to get by. You know, we're, wanting, we're just wanting to survive. But God wants us to thrive in the things that he's called us to do. And I believe that when you 
or follow and fulfill the will of God for your life, you do thrive. You do go to another level of power and authority. You do become more of who God's created you to be because you're stretching towards that. You're using your faith. You're letting smaller things go and grabbing for the higher things of God. And that's what's so important. So I want you to see what David writes here about how God sees us. And I'm going to have this up here on, on the screens. And it's in Psalm 8, verses 3 through 6, reading from the, the Passion Translation. And it says, look at the splendor of your skies. Now, this is a favorite, one of the favorite kind of ways I experience God is by looking at the universe because it's, it's so incredibly awesome and incomprehensible when you start to think about the size and, and the trillions of not planets or, or stars, but galaxies that have hundreds of thousands of stars. It's amazing. It's amazing. So look at the splendor of your skies, your creative genius glowing in the heavens. When I gaze at your moon and your stars mounted like jewels in their settings, I know you are the fascinating artist who fashioned it all. Pastor Lori likes to look at nature and trees and plants and and, 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 and the beautiful colors on this earth. And I love to look at the beautiful colors and creation in the universe. But everywhere you look, it's a fascinating artwork of hundreds of thousands of colors that all match somehow, and he puts it all together. And God is the amazing artist. And the reason why that's so important, and David is saying to look at this, is because he's about to tell you that God looks at you and created you that way. An amazing work of art, <laughs> or a piece of art. You're, you're a piece of art, or a piece of work. <laughs> And then he goes on, he goes, you fashioned it all, but when I look up and see such wonder and workmanship above, I have to ask this question. Compared to all this cosmic glory, why would you bother with puny mortal man or be infatuated with Adam's sons? What he's trying to get at here is, We see all this magnificence, but when we look at ourselves and see the brokenness that sin has caused and the dysfunction that rebellion has caused, we go, why in the world would God want to be involved with that? That's what we think. And he goes on, verse 5, he says, Yet what honor you have given men, created only a little lower than Elohim or God himself, Crowned like kings and queens with glory and magnificence, you have delegated to them mastery over all you have made. Get that. You have delegated to them mastery over all you have made, making everything subservient to their authority, placing earth itself under the feet of your image bearers. We are his image bearers, and he put us on this planet to rule, to reign, to have dominion over everything, and to do it in a way that honors God. Now, many times we don't do it in a way that honors God, and and we know the history of it, and people use the bad things even about Christian history to try to say, well, then that can't really be true because it's so bad. But if you look at the good things, if you look at the wonderful things that people have done in the name of the Lord hospitals and orphanages and, and, and all, this, all these beautiful discoveries. You know, most of the discoveries that are made are made by people who know God. Why? I mean, I'm talking about life-changing, life-saving miracles of, of medicine and uh, biology and Uh, astrophysics and all these things. I know there's a lot of atheists, but the more you really go into who's the one who actually discovered these, these were people who had a sense of God, a sense of purpose, that God had gifted them and that they were going to use that gift to help humanity. These are the good things that we need to see, even about our own country. We need to see the great things that that throughout all of history, you know, throughout all of history, every nation on this earth had slavery It was only the Western countries that sought to abolish it. It was only the Western countries. And the United States actually fought a war, and we did abolish it. Now, that is something to celebrate, not something to criticize. 
Because the, the, it's easy to criticize. The people who criticize are those who are doing nothing for humanity. They're just complaining so that they can be a victim to try to get something illegitimately instead of working for it the way God said. If you work for it, you will become who you have called to be. You never, I, gotta, I was going to play this. Uh, maybe I will sometime. I got a, vo- uh, 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 a message or you know, like a telemarketer in, on my voicemail, and I listened to the voicemail, and it said, and I played it for Pastor Lori because I almost fell off my chair laughing. It said, this is uh, makemoneywithoutwork.com. <laughs> make money without work.com or something like that. And, and there's the number on these is you can make $10,000 a week and not work. And I was just falling up because, you know, I've read the Bible. And, I, and the Bible says, first of all, if you get riches easily, it'll destroy you. Second of all, the Bible says, if you don't work, you will not eat. You know, and there's, so there's all kinds of scriptures that contradict. It was just so funny that this is the stuff that people are being sold today because it seems to serve uh, an illusion that they just deserve things without having to own the responsibility for things, including their freedoms. So, so uh, I just want to say, this, this scripture here is such a beautiful account of how God sees us and how he treats us and why he calls us to serve with him. And I always try to make the distinction here because Satan demands authority. God gives us his authority. Satan destroys things. He curses things. He kills things. God creates things. He brings life to things. He blesses things. And make no mistake, anything that's cursed or dying or destructive is of the devil. Anything that's being blessed is creative and bringing life is of God. And we need to focus on that and emphasize that in the things that we do and the things that we say around people. So my purpose today, my purpose, because I'm fulfilling my purpose here today, I believe, is to help you walk in the fullness of all God has created you to be. All right, now you've heard me talk about this before, but I'm going to get to some specifics that will give you reasons so that your choices when you leave here won't be go, oh, that was an inspirational message. You'll leave here and you go, oh, I'm going to make a choice to do what God's called me to do. That's always the action. You know, we were, I was talking with somebody the other day about, about um, you know, being involved with certain things. And, and I said, well, you know, Christ didn't call us to be believers. He called us to be doers. You know, I mean, we believe, but he called us to action, not just talk, not just thought, not just theology, you know, not just forever in school and and never living it out or never fulfilling what God created us to do. So I want to help you today to fulfill that mission that God has put you on this earth, to carry out the plans that he has for you and to help you see your significance, your importance, how vital you are to the world that we live in. So I'm going to give you enough reasons today to pursue your divine purpose. Everybody say reasons. <laughs> reasons. I, when I heard, I heard a motivational speaker one time, he says, all you need is enough reasons. And I went, I'm stealing that because that's what most Christians need. They just need enough reasons to do what the Bible says. <laughs> Turn to somebody and say, do you have enough reasons? Because <laughs> if you don't, you might miss your destiny. And you might want to take some notes today. I've got some things that you will want to write down or go back and get the um, message on this and write these things down because these are substantial, I believe, God-given reasons to pursue the purpose of why you're on this earth. Now, it's easy to pursue other things, and that's why we have to have reasons to pursue our purpose because it's easy to go through life missing our purpose if we are pursuing other things other than that. And there's all kind. boy, I'll tell you what, there are so many things to pursue. You're probably you're thinking to yourself right now, well, that's not real, I'm, not, I'm pursuing that, that's not really God's purpose, I'm pursuing that, or I've pursued that, or I want to pursue that. that <laughs> yeah, there's all, life is full of things that we want to pursue, and, and deep down, it's kind of like, well, that make, that'll make me happy if I pursue that. 
That'll make me content if I pursue that. If I get gratification now, uh, you know, I, I, I can, I'll be happy. But you know what? Sometimes those are the things that cause you to be sidetracked from your purpose is instant gratification or contentment. Because that's, your happiness really isn't the reason you were born. What you'll find is when you're living out your purpose, you may not like the happenings, but you're going to have joy because you're going to say, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. You know, anybody who's going to fulfill their purpose and be a world changer is going to have happenings around them that they may not like because there's a resistance to you walking in what God's called you to do. There's pushback from you walking in all that God has called you to do. And as Pastor Laurel will, will continue to share with us, hopefully next Sunday when we get into another church in, in, in the book of Revelation, you know, Jesus rewards and compliments those who stayed firm with what he's, they, what he's called them to do and not compromised and not, you know, just got all fearful. And that's one of the things that we're in this situation right now in our country where there's a spirit of fear. There's a spirit of fear released in the church. You know, whatever you think about what we need to do or not need to do, you don't need to fear. You need to look at the church in the Bible, in the book of Acts, and say, would Peter have said what some of the church leaders are saying today? <laughs> and I don't know what, what church leaders you're listening to. Some of the church leaders I'm, I listen to, because I listen to a lot of church leaders, are saying, oh, you know, we need to do all these things. And, and what would Peter do? Would Peter get in, in, in the middle of the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem and go, hey, you know, I heard, guys, the Holy Spirit's about to be poured out, but we're going to have to put that on hold because I heard there's a virus. Now, there's the laugh of whatever it is, familiarity or the laugh of, of yeah, that's, hmm. So we just need to realize that we are called, you know, a virus doesn't stop our purpose. It's because a lot of people are saying a virus doesn't stop our constitutional rights. But the virus doesn't stop our purpose in God either. Okay, and I don't need to qualify anything here. Everybody understands what I'm trying to say. I don't need to qualify something because the more you qualify it and, and you know, this and that and the other thing, the, the more you sound like you're not really standing up for what God wants you to do. You just need to be bold and stand up for what God wants you. How he wants you to do it, you know, you just be about the Father's business. But don't be distracted by the pursuit of happiness or joy or even safety or, you know, or security. There is no such thing. There may be a feeling of those things, but there is no such thing. <laughs> so the pursuit of all these things to will get in the way of fulfilling your purpose. Now, here is the challenge we all face when it comes to our purpose. It's the pull, the allure of all these things that we think will make us happy. You know, I'm not even talking about money, but if it, money fills in the blank, fill in the blank. But I'm just talking about all the things that we think you know, will make us happy. How many times have I sat there waiting for the new iPhone to come out? I mean, that, Sylvia, she doesn't know what I'm talking about. She's got a... A new phone, though, and she goes, this is, worth, this is useless. Other people, they're, they're waiting for months to get this new phone. She says, I can't even use this thing. And I don't mean to pick on Sylvia, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, you know, some of us just want a, a phone that we can call people on, not that runs our life and records everything that we say and reports it to whoever is listening. I'm taking way too long at this. But this is, this is important because these are things that keep us from our purpose. When, how long has it been? You know, so, you know that if I can get that new vehicle, that's, that's going to, that's, mm, I'll be set for a couple, I'll be happy for a couple years. Or maybe a new house, that'll make me happy. Or a new piece of clothing or a new piece of this or, or something there. Or maybe a new job, that'll make me happy. Or maybe new friends will make me happy. Maybe a new church will make me happy. <laughs> How about a new wife or a new husband? That'll make me happy. 
<laughs> yeah, somebody else will take them off their hands for you if you're not thankful for them. That's what Joyce Meyer says. <laughs> it's an allure of things. It's a temptation, and we have to resist the temptation of pursuing something else in place of what we're really here to pursue. Jesus had this temptation. He was tempted with the false promise of comfort and satisfaction of his flesh when the devil came to him and said, just turn these stones into bread. He was tempted with the false promise of doing things without consequence when he, the devil told him, just cast yourself down off the temple and his angels will give, you, will give charge over you so you don't hurt yourself. He was tempted with the false promise of gaining the entire world and all the power and authority in the world without honoring God and putting him first. He, the devil said, worship me and I'll give you the whole world. We know the term is selling your soul to the devil. Oh, and it works for a few years and then he turns his back on you, destroys you and you end up in hell. The Apostle John explained these temptations perfectly in 1 John 2, verses two chapter 2, verse 16. He says, For all that is in the world, all that the world can offer us, the gratification of our flesh, the allurement of things of the world, and the obsession with status and importance, none of these things come from the Father but from the world. Verse 17 he goes on, this world and its desires are in the process of passing away, but those who love to do the will of God will live forever. What a distinction. Hmm. Follow, pursue the allurements of the world. They're going to kill you and you're going to die with them. Pursue the will of God. You're going to live on forever and have the joy of the Lord. This is why I do what I do. This is why I'm, I'm a pastor. This is why we're in the ministry, so we can tell people, these are your two choices. You know, and sometimes it goes in one ear and out the other and then their lives end up miserable and they, well, they have all kinds of reasons for that. They have all kinds of reasons for the, the reason of blaming people this and I'm a victim here and that. Not really ever coming to the humility uh, and, and the grips of the fact that they made poor choices to gratify their flesh and it led to destruction. Hmm. God is not mocked. Whatsoever thou soweth, you shall also reap. And it happens. Hmm. So I challenge you today to join me in pursuing the will of God so you can live forever. I challenge you to pursue the purposes of God in your life. And let me give you some reasons. Now, I want to do a little illustration here. Anybody know what this would be called? A gift. This is a gift. Now, your, your purpose is like a gift from God. It's like a gift from God. The calling of God upon your life is like a gift. And somebody said, what you do with this gift is your gift back to God. What you do with your purpose is God's gift to you. What you do with your purpose is your gift back to God. And everyone has one of these gifts. I want you to get this visual here. But it is our responsibility to receive this gift and open it up so we know what it is. Now I'm going to ask for a volunteer, one of the family members here who, who, who are not afraid of physical distancing with me. <laughs> uh, should I tell my physical distancing joke? No, it's inappropriate. Okay. It's something I eat. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I'll probably cut that out of the message when I'm doing the editing. <laughs> Pastor Laurel, you have a purpose for your life. God has gifted you with the purpose. Thank you. There you go. What are you going to do with it? She'll never know what her purpose is unless she opens it, right? So you have to receive it and then you have to open it up. Well, I'm helping you open it up today, so yeah, let's find out what, your, your, what, the, what the purpose is. I mean, it's not going to open itself up. I mean, your purpose isn't going to be discovered by just sitting there while you're looking at this gift. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And here it is. 
Here is our purpose. It's a, it's a road that goes to a beautiful island. That's our destination. This is our desti destiny right there. It's our purpose. And what else is it, Pastor Laurel? It's a puzzle. It's a puzzle. Hmm. Your purpose has got a lot of pieces to it that you have to fit all together. You're welcome to go over there and, and put it together while I'm preaching, or just, you can just leave it over there for right now. Your purpose is like a puzzle. Let me just call it the purpose puzzle. Maybe we know one or two of the pieces of what we're called to do, what our purpose is, but we need all the pieces to create that beautiful picture of who God said we are and what we're called to do. And so I want you to engage in some of the reasons why you need to put this piece, this puzzle piece, this purpose puzzle together in your life so you can be all God's called you to be, so you can do everything God has created you to do, so that you can be the world changer he's called you to be. It's a purpose puzzle. And, we, and you have to pursue it, your purpose, by putting these pieces together. Some of the pieces look really weird, like I don't even know if that fits anywhere. You know, some of them are really hard to get in there. How many of you like doing puzzles or you're good at puzzles? couple of people. I don't do puzzles, but I kind of like them because there's a sense of, oh, I've another piece to what the picture looks like. And now you've been given all the pieces necessary to fulfill your purpose. Things like, well, let's just rattle off a bunch of pieces like time, resources. Well, I don't know if I have all, you have all the resources you need to fulfill your purpose. Mm-hmm. You have the spiritual gifts. You have the talents. You have the abilities. God's given you the pieces of, of, of having ideas, a mind that can think, a body that can work, a personality that can interact, a heart and a soul that can respond to things. You've been given the Word of God, a huge piece that we need to have for our purpose. You've been given the Holy Spirit to guide and direct you. You've been given the God, God's grace in his forgiveness to stand before him in righteousness, a huge piece to your purpose. You've been given God's promises. You've been given his authority, as we have read. You've been given his power, supernatural abilities. There's a lot more pieces, but these are some of the pieces that we put together in realizing what our purpose is. And guess what Pastor Tom's going to do right now? He's going to give you enough reasons to put your puzzle together. <laughs> He's going to give you enough reasons to put your puzzle. See, reasons are like, like rewards. If you get rewarded, that's a reason to do something. And if you get punished, that's a reason not to do something. And the promises in the Word of God reward us for accomplishing our purpose. And we get punished or bad things happen when we're not pursuing our purpose because we're per pursuing our own selfish ideas. And so what better thing to have enough reasons for than our purpose? Now, I believe many of our questions in life, Pastor Lori, many of our questions in life are hidden and we have to search and dig for them. All right? They're hidden from us, but if we have enough reasons to find them and dig for them, we'll pursue them. This is the way the life in the kingdom works, Jesus said. Life is like a treasure in a, in a field, and you need to purchase that field in order to get the treasure. It's like a pearl of great price that we must sell everything to obtain that pearl. It's like a net that goes under the water where you don't really see what's down there, but in faith you throw that net down hoping to catch a fish of every kind. This is the way the kingdom works. You may not see it on the surface. And this is why a lot of people pull back from selling out because they don't know what's in it before they get there. That's why it's about trust. That's why about giving your life to Jesus is about trusting him before you 
before you, before you receive all the promises that he has for you. It's about giving your life. It's about counting the cost. It's about selling out, paying the price to receive all that God has for you. And now, if you want to know your purpose, Jesus said, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. So you're going to do some asking. You're going to do some seeking. You're going to do some knocking and the doors will be open unto you. And the words there in the original language, ask, are, are words that mean ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. You keep seeking even if you're in the middle of fulfilling your purpose, you go, there may be more. Believe me, <laughs> there's always more. Oh, I know it. I, I'm going to tell you some stories uh, that there's always more. There, there are things that you didn't, when you're pursuing the purposes of God that, and you're fulfilling them, all of a sudden God shows up and he wants to give you more. <laughs> yes, he wants to threaten you with, I mean, promise you with more, reward you with more. <laughs> I had a friend the other day, I was, uh, a few weeks back, I was talking to him, and he, he started pastoring, he was a youth, a youth pastor, and then he started pastoring this church, and now he's a bishop, and, and he just had gotten his bishop, Rick, and uh, uh, started doing this, no longer pastoring, and I called him, I said, well, I said, I, I heard you're, you're a bishop now, I said, good luck with that, how's it going? Because <laughs> you know, when you go to a new level, hmm, when you get promoted, there's always more challenges. Now, all of us would be walking in, in our purpose when we have the reasons. And here's one of the things I want to share with J John said in John 15, 16, he says, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. In other words, I called you, I destined you with a purpose. And then he says, you, you are called to go into the world and bear fruit. That's all we're called to do. Just go in and bear fruit. And your fruit will last because whatever you ask my father, for my sake, he will give it to you. So the thing I have learned is if I sense God's calling me to do something, this is my purpose. I pursue it, and then I ask, I seek, I knock, and then I ask the Father, and he provides for me for anything I need. Pastor Laurie just mentioned a, f a few minutes ago, uh, our, the state of Wisconsin came in, in in our daycare and said, you know, you've got too many leaks in your you got too many leaks. This daycare is leaky. <laughs> it's a leaker. And so you need, to, you need to fix those things. Well, I've had the repair, the roof repaired on and on and on for about four or five years. And finally, the roofer said, I think I've patched it enough. I don't know that that's going to work anymore. So we were like, oh, well, mm. so I've already, I've been in two, two, three, three years worth of estimates. So I finally got some more estimates. And this is, this is what uh, it costs, you know, it costs, well, it's going to $55,000. That's probably what it is. And so we said, okay, Lord, this is what you've called us to do. You need to provide for us. And then you know what happens? <laughs> the panic demic hits. The coronavirus hits. And everything is closed down. I went, huh, I wonder how this is going to work. And then little bit by little bit, God gave opportunities for financial breakthroughs for the daycare and the church to the place now, so many financial breakthroughs and it was because of this virus. So, you know, if it's of the devil, keep it coming. <laughs> well, I know it's not of God, but the devil just, he overplays his hand all the time. Just remember that. So we're to the place now where we have probably, of the 55,000 we need, we probably have $50,000 that I didn't have before the virus started. Unbelievable. It showed up here. That happened. I said, hey, look at this, Pastor Lori. Hey, look at this. Look at that. I think, I think we can call the riffer. <laughs> starting in the end of August, or, or the end of July, starting the beginning of August, putting a new roof on. So we just need, we just need the $5,000. So one of you, I'm sure, will see me after the service and say, take care of that, Pastor Tom. I got you covered. But ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and will oh, ask the Father what you have need of. If you're doing your purpose, I always like to say where God guides, he provides. 
Mm. If you're doing what he guides you to do, he'll provide for you. So let me give you, let me give you today some reasons. These are the pieces of your puzzle to, to pursue your purpose. And they'll be up on the screen. You can write them down or you can come back and look at this later. But here are some reasons to fulfill your purpose. These are things that really work for me in life. If I have a reason to do something, it's all I need. I just need reasons. Number one, number one, the number one reason, we don't need that yet. The number one reason you are called by God is to do some things. You are called by God to do some things. And this is a a reason. And this is your mission in life. So the number one reason you should pursue your purpose is you're called by God. How many of you know you're called by God? Have I made that point? Okay. Say, I am called by God. That's your mission in life. That's your mission in life. Now, that card I was going to show you, go ahead and put that back up there, Tom. Remember when I said you were called and I had this I am called to list? Because I've had people ask me, Pastor Tom, I don't know what I'm called to do. And I thought, well, let's just put down a few simple things. This is what you're, everybody's called to do. You're called to seek first the kingdom, to know and love God, to love people unconditionally, to forgive people, to share God's love and hope with people, give my time, treasure, and talents to serve God and do what Jesus would do. I mean, <laughs> if you can check all those boxes, baby, <laughs> you can stand up here. So we all have universal things that we're called to do. The question is, do we get to our specific purpose if we're not willing to do the general purpose? Hmm. I would say probably you're going to miss out on a lot of why God put you on the earth if you're not willing to put the kingdom of, seek the first, the kingdom of God, to know God, you know, the the whole list here. The second reason, I'm just going to try to whip through these to get through, through here today. The second reason... to pursue your purpose is that you are ordained by God to do some things. You are ordained. Every person who is a follower of Christ, a believer in Jesus, is ordained into the ministry. Some people full-time, some people as a vocation, some people who work in the marketplace and do their ministry in the marketplace. You are ordained by God to do things. This is your ministry or your service in life. Number three, reason number three. You are designed by God to do things. This is a couple of messages long, not to get into it today, but you are designed by God to do something. This is your giftedness. You have abilities, you have talents. We do an entire evaluation here at Spirit Life Church. If anybody ever has not done it, called your spiritual um, profile. And we ask you questions and you can discover what your gifts and your abilities and your, <clears throat> the way God's created you and wired you. You are designed by God. And the thing I love about that is when we talked about God being an artist, no, everybody is unique. How many of you have ever thought, if I was them, I would do it that way? <laughs> no, you wouldn't. If you were them, you would do it that the way they're doing it, because you'd be them. <laughs> How many of you ever told you, you know, you should do it this way? And you're thinking, well, that wouldn't work for me. I don't think that way. I don't, my body doesn't work that way, whatever. You know, you're designed by God to do what you're called to do. And that's why I love this when the scripture in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul says every part of the body is necessary. And even the uncomely parts, even the parts that we cover up out of modesty, these are seem to be the more important ones. Whatever that means to you and to, to, what it means to me is that no matter what God's called me to do, it's essential. The hand can't say to the foot, I have no need of you. The head can't say to the foot, I have no need of you. Jesus can't say, he's the head, can't say to any other member of the body, I have no need of you. He's created the work of the church and the body of Christ to need each other. And that's why it is so important to be in church because you can't be the church watching church at home in your pajamas. (laughs) You just can't. You just can't do it. 
you know. <laughs> I see that hand. No, no, I really don't see that hand. <laughs> Bow your heads. Are you bowing your head? <laughs> you get the point. So you are designed by God to do things. What our responsibility is to discover what that design is, to develop the gifts that he's given us, and then to use them, to be faithful with them. And then when you're faithful with the gifts he's given you, then he will promote you, literally giving you more. Reason number four to pursue your purpose. You are given a desire by God to do some things. This is your passion in life. Pastor Lori loves working with little children. That's why she married me. <laughs> she loves working with uh, mentally disabled people. That's the other reason she married me. <laughs> she has a desire to work with children and certain things. It's, it's part, it part of who God created her to be. I've known other people go, I would never want to step in that daycare, or, you know, do this, do that. There are certain things that you love to do that other people don't want to do. There are certain things you would not want to do. I don't want to use the word hate, but you, you know, we use that word in, in a descriptive way. You would hate to do something, but other people love to do that thing. Whatever it is that God created you to do, that you desire to do, do with all your heart because you know what? That desire to do that one thing may be the, the answer to someone's prayers. That might be the solution to somebody's problems. That might be what somebody pays you a lot of money to do because they don't like doing it. <laughs> they don't like doing it. And that's your passion. Do you like to organize things? Do you like to create things? I'm just going to throw some ideas out. Do you like to fix things? Do you like to teach people things? Do you like to make things? Do you like to help other people do things? Now, I didn't say tell other people what to do. Do you like to tell other people what to do? <laughs> do you like to serve or give or pray or worship? All kinds of spiritual things that are giftings. God gave you certain desires in life because that's the way he designed you, and that's a piece of your purpose puzzle. Reason number five to pursue your purpose. You are empowered by God to do things. Empowered by God to do things. This is the anointing on your life. The anointing. We kind of use that word as a churchy word. But you can use the word anointing, meaning that God supernaturally empowers you to do what you're called to do. And ne doesn't necessarily have to be in church. Because we're not in church all day. Or, or all week. We're out in the world all week. Pastor Lori is anointed to lead and direct a daycare. You would not get a, a five-star rating from the state only after five, six years of owning a daycare unless you were anointed supernaturally to do it. <laughs> there were some things God called me to do that I didn't think I was anointed to do, and when I obeyed, all of a sudden the anointing came. How does that work? You know, I stopped asking how it all works, and I just started obeying. So you're anointed in life to do certain things. Uh, I, I kind of joke about this, but there are some things that anointings will come on me to do things. Like sometimes I'm anointed to find things that other people can't find. Anybody? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I'll touch electronics that don't work and they'll start working. I joke about it now. I go, hang on, Psst, hang on. <laughs> oh, you don't know where you put that? Hang on. And it shows up. And you may think, well, that's kind of funny. Are you sure that's real? Or, I don't know. It just keeps happening. I expect it to happen. Is there something like that in your life where, you know, nobody else, but you just walk in the room and boom, it happens. You, you look in the room and, you know, <laughs> you know, your husband's got the whole thing messed up and you go, hey, I, this goes here, this goes here, and this goes, put the flowers there and it, it's beautiful now. Does <laughs> that happen to you, Tracy? Does <laughs> that happen to you, Karen? <laughs> happens to me. <laughs> oh, this shirt, those pants, yeah, that's fine, all right. Because, you know, I get dressed by the Braille method, you know. The light's off, and the, I just take two things out, and they match, because everything in there matches. 
So it's easy for me now. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Yeah, it's, everything's got a match. You just, any time of day, doesn't have, you don't have, even have the light on. Just go in there. <laughs> when you're doing what God's called you to do, anointings come to you. Here's a story. When, when God told us to move to Cleveland, Tennessee, we had been in a singing group, and, and uh, I was a drummer and she was singing. So Lori could always sing, and we went to Bible school to go into full-time ministry. God had specifically spoken us to do that. Went down to Cleveland, Tennessee, a little Bible school down there for, with Norval Hayes. And one day, we were in Bible class, and this worship leader came to speak. She, her name was Jenny Grine, and she came to speak. She was a psalmist, and she spoke on the anointing of God. And at the end of her talk, she said, any musicians or singers that want to come up and pray for God's anointing, come on up. And Pastor Lori went down. She came up, and the, and the lady, Jenny, pr put her hands on her, prayed for her. And as the Holy Spirit came upon Pastor Lori, or Lori at the time, the woman looked at her and goes, God's going to give you a, a new anointing and you're never going to sing the same again. So, she went out under the, the power of the Holy Spirit. We went home that night. The next day, we, we, she got up and she started singing in the house to some soundtracks. She was upstairs, I was downstairs. And I'm like, what? What is that? And I, is that Lori? I went, are you singing? She goes, yeah, I'm singing. I said, unbelievable. She had, her voice had changed. I mean, it was still Lori's voice, but it went from a nice, nice voice that sings on tune, you know, nice voice, to a powerful, anointed voice where two years before that, a prophet pulled her out of the audience and says, God's called you to have the anointing and the, the spirit of King David, and when you sing, demons are going to flee and people are going to be healed. And when that anointing came on her, she got up. In fact, the next time she got up and Norval Hayes was in the room, he, he, stepped, he goes, who in the world is this? I want her to travel with me. When you put yourself in God's purpose, where he wants you to be, doing what he wants you to do, even if you don't have the gift or the anointing at the time, he'll give it to you, if it's his will. We've learned that a long time ago. Reason number six. We're going to get through all these. Reason number six. You are accountable to God to do some things. This is your responsibility in life. I'm hoping all of these reasons help you. If not want any of them, at least one of them will help you. This is a good one right here to help. <laughs> it's your responsibility in life to do what God's called you to do. If you ever needed a reason to fulfill your purpose, this one right here. God's going to hold you accountable for doing the things that you were born to do. I just want to encourage you that your life is not over. It's never over until it's over. You could be pursuing something and you're doing it and then God says, okay, you've been faithful. Boom, I'm going to give you a new one. I'm going to give you a new anointing. I'm going to give you a new responsibility. I'm going to promote you. I'm going to give you a new level of authority. Whatever it is that God is calling you to do, do it with all your heart, and you will see he will continually take you higher and higher and higher in the things he wants you to do on this earth. I don't know if there's any limit. I really don't know. I don't really don't know if there's any limit. It may be that we'll do our best, and then when we get to heaven, God says, okay, you have, you have 37,000 more levels that you didn't get to on the earth, now we'll just continue it here when you get to heaven. I mean, why not? You know, I mean, I want to be, you know, skiing on ski slopes and sitting in fishing uh, boats and, and sitting on the beach in heaven, but I think that there's going to be work to do. There's responsibilities. <laughs> and we're going to love to do it. Number seven. Reason number seven, you are energized by God to do some things, and this is your motivation in life. You're motivated to do some things. You see something in the world and you go, that's not right. 
Sometimes you see things that are wrong in the world, you go, oh, well, nothing I can do about it. But some people get all worked up into a lather about it. <laughs> you know what? That's your motivation in life. You want to change some things. Maybe you have a desire to encourage and bless certain people. Maybe you have a desire to help people receive the things of God. Maybe your heart breaks for the lost. You're motivated to share the good news with people. So the question is, what motivates you? What energizes you? And on the opposite, what drains your energy? And maybe it's, that's not what you're called to do. So I've learned a long time ago, especially in the role that I play as a pastor, I've got to know, is this my motivation? Or is this just somebody telling me I'm supposed to do this because I'm a pastor? Because if it's not something God specifically called me to do, I know I'm not going to do a very good job at it. Somebody else who's called to do it can represent me and do it even better than I can. Number eight, you are inspired by God to do things. This is your revelation in life. Hmm. What things do you see or understand about life that others may not? Sometimes we'll be in the living room and we'll have a, be, I'll be having a discussion with my family. And Laurel will say something like, how come not everybody can see that? <laughs> and I'm going, well, you know, God's given you a certain ability to have an understanding, our revelation in this area. He's inspired you. He's shown you some things. Could be discernment, could be wisdom, could be all kinds of things about your life that you have a revelation about something in life that helps you fulfill your purpose. See, not everybody has all of the answers. And you don't need to. But everybody has some of the answers. Everybody has some of them. What answers to life's problems has God given you? That's the question. When I have a question about video cameras, I call somebody named Laura. <laughs> when I have a question about pastoring, I call somebody named Bishop Swilly. When I have a question about accounting, I call a CPA named Joseph. When I have a question about decorating, I call somebody like Tracy Northway. <laughs> when I have a question about cleaning chairs, I'll call Richard and Karen. When I have a question about prayer and encouragement, maybe I'll call Pastor Janine. When someone has a problem, do they call you? Live your purpose, and they will. Live your purpose, and they will. Number nine, you are directed by God, by God to do things. You're directed by God to do things. This is your strategy in life. God has a plan for your life, a directive, a move, a direction, an action. This is a strategy. He has a plan of action for your life to be an overcomer, a winner, and help other people overcome and win. He has a calling on your life to solve problems and to create wins for people. Now, a lot of times that is messy. But if you get really good at it, you can create a win for somebody in their life and they may not even know it was you. Mm-hmm. Number 10, you are shaped by God to do some things. This is God's hand upon your life. When I say God's hand, I mean he is constantly trying to shape you and mold you and conform you into what he wants you to be. And how many of you said, get your hands off me? Because <laughs> if you say, get your hands off me, when God's trying to mold, if you don't bend to the will of God, you will break. And there's nothing wrong with being broken, but not for the reason of being stubborn and rebellious. Allow God to do what he wants to do in your life. We are the clay. He is the potter. He knows the design. He knows what he did when, he, when you were first conceived, what his plan was for your life. And a lot of times, we're not fulfilling our purpose because we haven't allowed God to make us into that shape or that conformity that he has for us. So stay at what we call stay on the potter's wheel, even if you're dizzy. <laughs> stay on that potter's wheel. It's okay. It's going to turn out to be a beautiful. Pastor Lori does a whole message 
on, on the potter's wheel. It's beautiful. The, all the whole process is so um, metaphorical about our lives, allegorical about what God does in our life. In John 15, I think this is up on the screen, in John 15, 2, the New Living, it says, this is an example of New Testament pottery. <laughs> he cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit. Remember I said it's the will of God that you go into the world and produce fruit? Then you can ask whatever you want. But he cuts off every branch that doesn't produce fruit. And he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce more fruit. So you have two options. Which one would you prefer? Neither. <laughs> I mean, we don't want to be cut off. So what's the other option? Pruned. What is... What is hmm... Mm. See, I'm not the best horticulturalist, person that takes care of plants. But in order for a plant to really be healthy, you've got to cut off the dead parts. You know, sometimes we just go through life and dead stuff grows on us spiritually. And God's got to come in and trim that stuff back. How many of you might be going through a trimming right now? I'll tell you what, COVID-19 put a lot of people through some trimming. Mm -mm. It certainly did. It's not over. Oh, it's not over. Put on your patient pants. <laughs> Patience and endurance. Just let God have his way. For sure. For sure. So there's at least 10 reasons. 10 pieces to your purpose puzzle. 10 things that you can use to put your purpose together, to see how God designed you and why he put you on this earth. Reasons to pursue, reasons to discover your destiny, reasons to fulfill the word of God in your life. The only thing you need is if these reasons create passion in your life to pursue it. To sell what you have to buy the field of destiny is what I like to call it. It's the field of your purpose. Let's stand up on our feet. I have more to say about this, but I'm going to do that next time. And I just want to pray with all of you today. If you could stand up on your feet. Bill and um, Lorel, if you could come up and play. I know we're going to close with this song. Wherever you are watching, we're standing here in, in the sanctuary here at Spirit Life Church. You might want to just close your eyes and bow your heads because I want this to be a moment where the Holy Spirit speaks to you. I've given you and imparted to you what I felt like the Lord wanted me to share with you today. You need to say yes to what he is saying to you personally. The one thing I know about God, he is a personal God. The one thing I know, the reason I believe so strongly in God's purpose and plan in my life is because he directs and guides. And when I obey what he says, he manifests himself in supernatural ways. So let me pray with you right now. Just open up your heart and in your heart say, God, I surrender to you. I know I'm not an accident. You've placed me here on this earth. I have a destiny. And I want to do everything I can to be responsible to live it out. I want to do everything I can to discover why, why you've put me on this earth so I can change the world around me. I don't want to be average. I don't want to be the one always needing ministry or needing prayer. I want to be the one giving ministry, serving, praying for others. I want to be the one helping, fixing, not the one breaking. So Lord, if you can use my life, take it right now. Make me into what you want me to be. Prune me. I don't want to be cut off. So I say, Lord, prune me that I might bear more fruit. Mold me and make me into that golden vessel that I can sing, that I can be used by you, that I can be presented to you without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Lord, you can transform areas of my heart that are still resistant to you, that are still in rebellion to some things. So God, take those things, 
cut off those dead areas of my life so that I can be faithful to serve you. Lord, the word really is change me. Change my heart. We pray that prayer today. We come into agreement. We pray for our brothers and sisters right now who are watching and those who are, are here today that you would change them. Make them into what you want them to be. We stand in agreement for your will to be done, for your kingdom to come, for that is the life that we want to live, the life in the kingdom of God. We thank you for it. Now let's sing this song together. Pastor Lori is here to lead us. And really pray this. As